everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and this is my husband Kevin. And today we're, we're gonna talk with you about our freak out moment from last week and what we have learned which has made us feel a lot better. Yeah, so last week we transplanted six rows, so about 300 feet of brassicas into our garden, which is all of our cauliflower, broccoli, collards, cabbage. and cabbage. And then we put these row covers over. They're called floating row covers. It's basically like a tunnel that goes over with fabric. And then we realized that it was starting to get pretty warm inside of those tunnels. And we really thought that we were going to lose all of our brassicas because our understanding was that if the temperature got too warm, they would go to flower or bolt. Well, let me back up a little bit. We got these floating row covers to keep them warm overnight because we have had some really cold evenings. In fact, last night it was 27 degrees. Right. But we also got them to keep <clears throat> the bugs away because these uh, plants, the brassica plants, uh, are really vulnerable to the cabbage moth, which lays eggs and then they have a cabbage, their, their babies are called cabbage worms and they eat up all your plants. Right, and we've had terrible success in, in the past couple of years because of that. Right, so we did these floating coat row covers and then when we were under there checking on our plants last week, we realized, oh my goodness, it is really warm under there. So we got one of our thermometers and uh, checked the temperature over the course of a day and it was getting up to uh, 90 right, close in to the 90. 90s. Yeah. Uh, 91 actually one time. Wow. So we kind of freaked out and opened them up thinking that we made a terrible decision by using these floating row covers. So I called our contact at growersolution.com and he kind of pointed me in the right direction saying that we shouldn't worry quite so much about the air temperature, but we should be checking more on the soil temperature right. of our plants. Right, he also suggested that there's a possibility that the woven ground cover, this plastic woven ground cover, that could be heating up the soil and affecting the growth of our plants. And so we need, should check into that as well. Right, so it was kind of a double whammy. We were afraid that the floating row covers were holding in too much heat and that the black uh, woven ground cover that we were using actually might be heating up the soil. So after talking to them, we did more research. I did a bunch of reading online and I realized that it really isn't the air temperature that will make your brassica plants bolt or go to flower. Uh, it's actually the soil temperature. And we also discovered what the optimal temperature range of the soil is for these types of plants. In our case, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and collards. Right. So our optimal soil temperature for them to grow their absolute best will be somewhere between 65 and 75 degrees. Anything over 75 degrees for the soil temperature will make them start to bolt. So then we had that knowledge that we could come back out to the garden and take some soil temperature readings uh, to see if it was hotter under the row covers, <laughs> it was, if it was hotter under this black woven ground cover. And uh, so we, we wanted to share with you that information real time so that we can learn together if any of this affects the, the soil temperature and if so, how does it affect it? So let's jump up and start taking some soil temperature readings. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a temperature reading of just bare soil, not really in the garden at all, but off in one of the walkways, just as kind of a baseline of where uh, the soil temperature is in general on our property right now. So I've got a, uh, a temperature probe. We're just gonna put this down in uh, about four inches below the soil. All right, so it looks like our baseline reading is about 55.5 or 55.6. So the next thing I think we should do is go take a temperature reading uh, through the woven ground cover because we've gotten a lot of questions and concerns from you guys that uh, this black, black woven ground cover that we're using is probably heating up the soil. It's probably making it much warmer than it would be in just a normal part of the yard or where there's bare soil. So let's go check and see if that is true. All 
All right, so it looks like the temperature right through the woven ground cover is really just about the same as it is uh, in an area where there's no ground cover at all. Actually, it was just a little bit cooler. It was 55.3, it was about 55.6 where there was no ground cover. So I would say in general, the ground cover has having no effect on the soil temperature at all. So next, let's check the soil temperature underneath the floating row covers. You know, it's been warmer under there and the black woven ground cover has been under there. So maybe it's a lot warmer under there. So let's check. Look at these cabbages. Oh my gosh, look at how good they look. I'm so excited. We are going to be eating fresh cabbages out of this garden in no time. Okay, I'm trying to concentrate on what we're supposed to be doing here and not being so super excited. I'm going to put the thermometer through the black woven ground cover down into the soil. Let's see what that temperature is. So it looks like the temperature is about 58.6 degrees and while it is about three degrees warmer than other places, it's still well within the safe zone and the good zone for growing these brassicas. So three degrees really isn't that big of a deal in my opinion. Uh, I think we're still very safe and I'm very encouraged about the method that we're using to grow these this spring. Now we do have two different types of these floating row covers. These are the thickest fabric and we do have a thinner fabric down on the last two rows. So maybe there's a difference there as well. So let's head down there and check the soil temperature down there. Now these are collards under here. You can see how much thinner this fabric is. So I'm gonna do the same thing and put the thermometer down through the plastic. We'll take a reading over here. So the soil temperature here under the thinner fabric is about 56 degrees, actually 56.0, which is much closer to the temperature of the soil that's uncovered over there, that our first reading. So, so that's interesting. Now we have had two really pretty cold nights here. The last two nights has been 29 degrees and this morning 27 degrees. We've got one more night of cold weather before we don't see anything uh, in the 30s at all for a long time. So we are gonna be switching out the thicker floating row cover for more of this thinner stuff, which should also continue to keep the soil temperature cool for these brassicas. So learning this information about the air temperature versus the ground temperature and taking these readings and finding out this information about the woven ground cover makes us feel a little bit better and, and more informed really and more comfortable growing this way. But I'm super happy that uh, everything is gonna be okay. The way that we're growing these should be fine and hopefully we're gonna have a fantastic harvest. Now, I want to be able to share with you the progress that we've had on some of the other things that we planted here in our spring garden. So let's get up and I'll show you some of the things that have been germinating. The first thing that is up and doing so well are the radishes. We have two rows here back to back right here and they're doing so well. We've actually split this row into three, so we'll succession plant. Um, we, so this one's coming up, now it's time for me to plant the other third, and we're gonna do that probably tomorrow morning. Next up here is a spinach, and that has taken a little bit longer, but it is finally starting to germinate, and we're really excited about that. It's been a while since we've had spinach, and I've been craving it, and I've been excited to start cooking with it. Then we have two separate rows of lettuce. 
This is our leaf lettuce, we can, which we can cut kind of over and over again. That is up and has germinated. The end of the leaf lettuce row is kale, and that's just starting to germinate. We're excited about that. It's actually one of Samantha's favorites. This row of lettuce is head lettuce, a form of romaine that we're growing to sell at the Ava Farmer's Market. That farmer's market actually starts this weekend, which is the first weekend in April. We generally go there every week as we have things available every Saturday from 7 a.m. to noon. If you wanna stop by and see us, we'd love to chat with you. Next up are the beets. They take a little bit of time to germinate too, so they just started popping out of the ground. I'm so excited for them. We're gonna be canning a lot of beets this year. I also wanna try uh, fermenting some and make, maybe making the fermented beet kvass drink. I haven't had that before, but I'm willing to try it. This next row is kohlrabi. It hasn't popped out of the ground yet. I'm still hopeful. Generally, it can take a little bit longer and sometimes it would like a little bit of a warm spell before it will germinate and we haven't really had a warm spell. But the turnips, which are next, are like the rock star. They were even up before the radishes. We love turnips. We planted an entire row. What we can't eat as a family will sell at the farmer's market. Now we showed you a little bit of the six covered rows of our brassicas. We've got one row of cabbage, two rows broccoli, two rows cauliflower, and a row of collards. They're all doing great. I'm not gonna uncover them. We showed you a little bit of when we were doing the soil uh, temperatures but let's go look beyond them. So after our six rows of brassicas, uh, we have first of all, two rows of peas. The first row is our snow peas, and those are actually coming up the best out of the two types of peas that we have planted so far. Uh, the snow peas are coming up awesome. And then after that, we have a row of English peas. Now these will be the peas that we actually shell and can uh, and they're doing really well too. They're not up quite as far as the snow peas yet, uh, but this week uh, we're supposed to warm up quite a bit. It's supposed to actually be in the upper 60s by the end of this week, and I think these are really going to take off this week. Uh, that means we also still need to put up the trellis for these. We're gonna put a trellis on each one of these rows so that uh, they have something to climb on. But in general, we're really happy with the way that the peas are doing so far. Now these last four rows of the garden are things that are going to take quite a bit longer to be ready. Uh, the first row is our carrots. Uh, they're not coming up at all yet, but that's fully to be expected. Uh, the next row is onions. Uh, we planted half of the row with onion sets, or which like the uh, little onion bulbs. Those are doing great. They're already starting to grow. The second half of the row we planted with onion seeds, uh, and they will take quite a bit longer to actually germinate. And then the last two rows of the garden are our rows of potatoes. Uh, we just planted those at the end of last week, and then it got quite a bit cooler after that, and we got a bunch of rain. So they aren't doing anything yet, uh, but I'm sure that they're looking good underneath that straw, and they'll just take a little bit of time, and they'll be coming up great. I know that we've been asked by a couple of our viewers how things are going out here in the garden and you can see that overall they're going really really well. You know both of these methods of gardening are fairly new to us. Last summer was the first time we used the woven ground cover. We were so pleased with the results we knew right away that that was going to be something we would continue to do. The floating row covers, this is the very first time we've ever used them. So we're still learning about them as well. So the fact that we kind of freaked out a little bit about the temperature in them, uh, you know, it's just kind of a learning curve. Uh, we didn't really know. Uh, we're glad that we were pointed in the right direction by Grower Solution so that we could start researching. And that then we could share that knowledge with you guys so that hopefully we can save you a little bit of time and you won't have to go through the same kind of freak out moment that we had.
So you guys, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Please share it with people you know who might also enjoy the kind of life that we're living. Uh, maybe they'll enjoy your channel too. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.